Now, welcome back, ladies and gents, to another fantastic Tom's Chats. Yes, it's brand new, and I'm here with Mr. Flavius Lupu. Thank you very much, Flavius, for being here. Today, we're going to be going through, we're going to be talking to Flavius, obviously, talking about your story, where you started flair bartending, where you started bartending. We're going to be talking about how to be creative, how to be original in flair. It's one of the things you're renowned for, and I think, no? Yeah? Yeah. I think so. Uh, we're going to be talking about competitions, we're going to be talking about flair bartending moves, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff is coming, so get prepared, make yourself a nice Manhattan or cocktail of some description that you enjoy, such as a pina colada as well, uh, and sit back, relax and, and get ready for, for this podcast. But before we go any further, we are doing a giveaway. Ooh. We've got a tin and a spoon to use, wow, used by myself and Flavius. Look at that. Uh-huh, woo! See, that's why he's good. Uh, to win one of these, there's two to give away. Two, one, two. All you need to do is comment down below what flair bartending means to you, or if you don't flair, what bartending means to you, and we'll be choosing someone at random to send these to you. Boom, boom. All right, so let's get to it. Oh, there's a little surprise coming at the end as well, which, you don't know about, but you know about. So stick around until the end oh, to find out what that is. It. Anyway, enough of that. How are we doing, Flavius? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you very much for, for doing this with me today. Um, we're at home and rearranged the bedroom to create this beautiful environment for you. So you can feel relaxed, zen. Maybe we'll do an hour meditation somewhere in the middle. Too bad we had two coffees already. So <laughs> and <a> zen. <laughs> another one right here. Mm. Really fucking zen right now. Anyway, Flavius, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get started as a bartender? Was you bartender first, then Flair, or? Uh, actually, no. Um, so first thing first, basically the first videos that I've seen was my brother sending me a few moves uh, when he moved to Spain. So after like a year, I finished school and I moved to Spain as well. And basically he taught me a few moves, just like a flip and a hand stall, a couple of like thumb rolls and around the, around the hand. And basically an over the shoulder to a hand stall that was like the biggest, the biggest move. Um, so hang on, you, uh, a, a flip to a hand stall? That one. Over the shoulder? That would, yeah, and then kind of, these ones, those ones on the side, nice. like the old, like the old style, yeah, yeah. Like kind of this and this and this. Still got it. Kind of. Uh, and basically, yeah, that was that was pretty much it. I uh, moved to Spain, uh, started working as a as a bar back in um, in the in the bar that my brother used to work, and slowly, slowly, um, I told him to basically teach me whatever he knew and. And after that, I kind of start researching on the internet. I didn't know. I didn't know that this was called flair. Hang, back then. hang, hang on a second. When was this? This Which is 2006, uh, summer 2006. So there wasn't Facebook. There wasn't YouTube. There wasn't social media. I, I remember. I remember. No, uh, no. Uh, I remember just on YouTube. I think the. Uh, well, a couple of videos was like um, Christian Del Page in like an IBA kind of competition. Yeah. And and basically that that was it, I, I think. Uh, and then, um, <clears throat> then I'll just move move around the uh, around Valencia. I was living in Valencia back then. Uh, Originally Spain. from. I moved from Romania to Valencia. Right. So. Back then, I was just traveling one day with my with my brother in the in the park. It's like a massive park in in Valencia, and we saw a few guys just fla just flaring basically. And back then, I wanted to buy some some bottles, some plastic bottles, and then I kind of get into into contact with those guys. One of the guys uh, was uh, Galin Ivanov. Oh yeah. And and basically, I've I've started collaborating with them. I've done like a. So small mixology and a little bit of flair uh, course, and then basically they really like me and with another guy, me, uh, Galen Ivanov and uh, Nikki Nakov, we basically uh, found this this company. It was called uh, Flair Connection. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. This was roughly 2008, uh, uh, around there, and since since then we just started working. We basically worked for like a couple, like four years four or five years, 
doing like events all around Spain, working with um, with Schweppes, with uh, Sobieski, uh, and then Legendario. If you heard about it, it's yeah, like yeah. Rum, Cuban rum. With them, we worked like for four for four years. We did like the national tour in uh, around around Spain, like 13, 13, country, 13 cities plus some villages ar uh, around. Uh, and basically that that was pretty much it. I get hooked on it and basically never stopped since then. Uh, and that's where we met for the second time. We I always get met, confused. No, we've met 2007 in um, in Switzerland in a competition, but I was only watching. I went with the guys with Galin and with Nikki. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Supporting them, watch. That was basically the first live competition that I was that I saw. Uh, and that was uh, some crazy stories from yeah. <laughs> Switzerland. As well. What was the name of the competition? Do you remember? Uh, something with Shape crack, 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 crack. Something with I think. Uh, it was Zurich Crack Flare Open, no? It wasn't, or the, mm. whatever it was, all it I remember. It was close to Zurich, yeah. All I remember was the MC saying, you have, you have two minutes left, take your time. <laughs> Everybody, two minutes, take your time. No, you've got two minutes. Uh, wow. and, yeah. and some, some memorable after party situation there. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I got stuck, I got stuck in, in Zurich the next day. We get stuck because they basically uh, broke in our uh, car. Uh, ah, that's right. We had to wait for the window replacement and loads of, loads Lo of storage. Loads happened. of shit got stolen as well, no? Yeah. So anyway, so well, you know, what goes up and down in the Flare world. Um, so that was around 2006 you started Flare. Yeah. And then you was in Valencia until, and you moved to, you moved to London after Valencia, right? I moved to Ibiza for, for a year. Okay. And after, after Ibiza I've been home for like a few months, for four or five months, and then I came back here in 2014. 2014. And then he, I don't know, I mean, we, we didn't know each other amazingly well before you moved here. We knew each other, obviously. And then we started working together, and then you kind of jumped into the competition scene quite heavily, no? Yeah, basically, I, I had like I had like a moment. I think it was uh, so. First of all, two thousand eleven, I I won the Spanish the Spanish championship, um, and after seeing uh, what does it mean mean uh, winning competition and seeing that a lot of times people are treating you not that well. Let's say after you after you win, um, I kind of had like a problem. Let's say like a spirituality kind of thing of me thinking if I'm gonna keep moving forward with, with, with this or not because it's like a really egocentric, egoistic kind of, uh, let's say, world of who sure. has the biggest moves, who has, who's the best, who's the whatever. And that's the reason I kind of, we stopped the company back then in, in Spain, I moved to Ibiza and I, I almost quit Flair by, back then, that was like uh, late 2013. But one of my biggest fears was not accomplishing something that I think that I could have accomplished yeah, in general yeah. in, in life. So I kind of knew that I could give more, but because of the reason of like uh, whatever was happening, I kind of wanted to get out. So I, I literally had like two years of a gap of only working, not practicing almost at all. But I didn't want to quit. So back then it happened that I come back to London and I've reconnected again. Let's this, say to the let's touch on that the the ego egoistic discipline or whatever you want to call it. I mean I, we we've spoken about it a lot in the past, and I think other people have that flair bartending is this sort of ego egoistic thing, right? Um, is one of the reasons why I want I I personally stopped myself. Because of you constantly feel like you're competing to see who's the who's the well you are you're competing to see who's the best between you and your friends. Okay, you're not competing to see who's the best personally, but in the competition. Exactly. But it it, it overlaps sometimes, and and things can get taken out of hand. But what do you think of today's flair bartenders and how they are with their ego and the way they behave? I don't know. I think I think at the moment what is happening, it's it it did happen in a lot of other other sports like uh, free running, um, free free running, skateboarding, uh, a lot of a lot of this kind of really hard uh, games or really hard tricks. But people start posting a lot that uh, even if they let's say they recorded a million times to land that move, 
but that another people who, uh, the first, when you first see this movie you're like oh shit this is possible already and they've been doing this yeah, so yeah. i need to get my game on and trying to beat that without not beat that but i mean it's it's, it's evolving a lot more through through social media and yeah. these kind of things but still i guess coming back to ego and respect a little bit it's 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 a few things it's a few things as maybe me because i started and i was breakdancing when i when i was young and that culture it's all about respecting the other person's yeah. style and movement and try try to get inspired from them but not take it take their stuff because, sure. Um, I think I th sorry to interrupt very quickly. I think Nicholas had a very similar view, or has a very similar view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we we kind of share a little bit the same kind of concepts, I, I guess. Sorry, or so yeah, go on. And you were saying that it says it's about inspiring others, but not taking. It it, their, it, it will get it, you will get to the moment that what was uh, original and really creative uh, four years ago will get to a point that is basics today, kind sure. of. So. So let's see, let's for an example, finger rolls. Like if you realize people are start doing finger rolls much more this is. And let's say a few, a few, a few years ago. Uh, <laughs> Uh, shout out. It's not, it's not, it's not Akim, Akimba flair. Ah, maybe Akimba. I don't, I don't know. This, I, don't know this, I don't know these days. But yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's basically is not, is not a move that somebody created. Has been finger roll has been existed previous culture like from drums basically and loads of other stuff. We just implemented a move from a different culture mm -hmm. to our culture, mm -hmm. let, let's say. But uh, I'm somehow, how do you say, happy to happy to see that people are going somehow in this direction because those are moves related with feeling, mm -hmm. related with feeling. And once you will have it, you will not have to look at the move that you're doing, and you sure. will be able to engage more with with, with your audience. This meanwhile, you're looking. Meanwhile, you're doing something instead of like manipulating five objects in the air and not being able to to connect with uh, with, uh, with your audience. Sure. Uh, I as long as they still will understand and like well, they, uh, well, they will understand that it's something in the air and you're like uh, your level of um, technical ability it's it's on point but it's it is 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 different it, this different. is it I, I think you made a good point actually that finger rolls it, you you're able to connect with your audience a lot more that's a very good point uh, whereas if you're chucking up five or six objects in the air it's very hard to do to do that. The different the difficulties I find with finger rolls when people do it on stage, unless it's done clean and to the music, people just go. People with the general public are just like, well, it just spun around near his hand a little bit, which obviously for us we see the technicalities yeah. of what is going on. I'm much I'm much more with you on that one in in moving the bottle close with your body to make it flow a lot better so you can connect with, with the audience a lot more. And, but, first, and first of all, because it's a feeling-based move. Like yeah. the roll, rolls, everything that is connected to your body, yeah, you, you are feeling the connection. You, I can look you at feel you this. and do if the you roll. you throw the bottle, I don't feel I'm nothing. Like, uh, yeah. uh, what do you feel? Like once, you, know, you won't feel, you won't feel, you didn't feel it in here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, at the end, I think at the end is is this and 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 what we are transmitting to that stage is like first of all is the confidence, hundred percent on doing things and and when they are uh, when they are um, connected to your body, it it feels I don't know it feels better it looks it looks yeah. it looks better it like it's understand better. One of the first thing, the first things is what people will see is like how confident have you done what you've done, and I think we've spoken with you a lot of times, and even you told me like uh, back back a few years ago, or whatever that maybe some of my moves take too long or like they are like, uh, I, let's say for an example the martini that I was doing is like takes like twenty seconds to do that move, but and I was always. Um, aiming to say it doesn't matter how much you do it's what you do and True. how and how do you present it and, and maybe a lot of people cannot do a move of 20 seconds 
But meanwhile, in those 20 seconds, they might have do a bump, top, roll sequence and everything that has been already created. And you might see, oh, they, they've done much more in this 20 seconds that I've done only one move. So let's but in my head, basically, it's like, my move would, would, would have I've done more. So that's, that's in, uh, an interesting one, because uh, as a judge, when I'm judging, one thing that the judges always say when they watch Alexander Stefano, for example, is that, let's, think, let's compare him to you. He does a thousand moves in his routine, whereas perhaps you do a hundred. So what you're saying is that your, I don't want to say that you're specifically, this is not like, it's, you're saying that the, the moves that you do should be more important than the amount of moves, which I completely agree with. I completely agree with. Um, however, I, uh, there's that balance as a judge where you go, okay, if one, if I walked up on stage and did one really good move, excuse me, but then some other guy went up on stage and did a hundred fairly good moves, which is, which is, but I don't know. Do my, know? my, my direction and my mentality has, has always been a little bit different in this, in this uh, perspective is like, I always, I always wanted to, if I'm going to a competition, let's say uh, Flair Mania 60 competitors or something like that, I will want uh, to be recognized or to enter in the, if they do a promo video, I will be in that promo video. Just yeah. one second with one move. So it's like, for example, I was always concentrating on bringing something that I will be remembered as, as instead of like, oh no, I'm going to do 10 moves more than you. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, never, I never aim in that direction. I aim always to like bring something that maybe nobody has seen before or like if from the, po from the point of view of, um, of um, how do you say? Uh, the audience. Uh, audience, a spectator. Uh, they might go home and they be like, oh, I've seen 60 competitors, but it was this one guy who did this. Exactly. I wanted to be that guy. Yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. that was my that was my 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 aim always. And and that's the reason maybe I didn't go and do those 1000 moves. Sure. Or maybe emphasize it more in in others. In other I think ways. I think we were, we are very similar in that respect is that whenever I competed as well, I always wanted to show my stuff. I, I ended up going down the road of that, uh, you know, try and do as much flair as I possibly can in the five minutes that I have on stage. But what I've learned from that inadvertently, and especially from judging, is that, and a lot of people can learn this, learn from this mistake, is cut away 30% of your flair. Like, for example, if, if you're doing, let's say, whatever, whoever it is, cut away 30% of your flair and make the remaining 70% look amazing because that's going to make a much bigger difference yes. than trying to throw, as we say, throw your life, do you know what I mean, yeah. into a routine. 100%, 100%, 100% agree with that. And it depends. I, I always, when I teach somebody, I always say the same. I was like, I always see people, and people when they start learning flair, and I've done the same basically is like trying to learn and trying to get as much as they can instead of perfecting those basics that they... and, until they can move forward yeah. and then they will have 100 moves again but all from those 100 moves they will be able to land two of them uh, always yeah 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 for yeah. example Bruce Lee said said this thing once he said I'm not afraid about the uh, uh, the I'm not afraid of the person who has 10 time 10,000 hits and he practice each once I'm more afraid of the person who practice one move 10,000 10, one hit 10,000 times so, so basically that's 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 the that's the good it's a, it's 100% I completely agree <clears throat> with you um and I think that that uh, mentality of people trying to put so much into their routines on stage yeah, yeah. comes with the ego because it, for, for, yeah, because they want to do more than look, others. Look at what I got! Look at what I got! Where he's like, well, hang on a second. If you took away that 20, 30 percent of your flair and pushed the other, the rest of it into something better, then you don't have to say, look at what I got. Exactly. The actions will speak louder than words, and you'll stand out. Uh, but um, yes. yeah, your some of some of your moves, I think, are very unique. Just going back to some of the stuff that you do on stage, and as I said to you, some of them maybe take too long, or I'm not a huge fan of some of them, or perhaps some of them people just don't even understand. I, I, I totally agree, and that that was one uh, one of my biggest mistakes was I never cared about what people were were were, th were thinking. 
until a few days ago, uh, I I had a I had a chat with my uncle, and I respect my uncle. He's he's been a teacher for for thirty years or more maybe, and and he put it like this. He said, any art form uh, that that you're doing, it should be first understood by by your audience. That that would be, that, that that that's the most yeah. that's the most important thing because because as well and and this and this as well a lot of times as well as when I when I'm teaching this I I always explain um, to the people to try to look like you're doing it for the people not for yourself when you're on stage because yeah. a lot of times you look like you're going and you're just practicing for yourself you yeah. know like you did. You, you, you don't engage, you don't connect, you don't, you don't do it for, for, the, for the people. And then obviously if you don't do it for the people, there is, there's no, they don't even want to try to understand at some point. And some things you might understand, some things you might not understand. Is maybe you'll understand more a sequence of like going bam 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 and you're like focusing because it's going, it's going, it's, it's, it yeah, keeps yeah, going, yeah, it's yeah, something yeah. in the air instead of like a small detail of like whatever, how they link the move together and and maybe even the link. And I have a, a few things that are like some links that are like, I told the guys, just try, it's like just a link and you will not be able to get it because <laughs> it has to, it has to connect with... Hand be perfect with the other move to, for you to be able to get to the other end. So, do you think that flair, uh, flair bartending or flair is an art or a sport? Uh, both, I, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why? Uh, for me, I think it's an art. I mean, there's a, there's a video I saw online recently of a little kid going, "Everything is art. Everything is art." Which what he was saying, I completely agree with. But some people say flair is a sport, you know, we're competing. And I'm like, well, I think that's part of the problem of what we're doing is that being a sport, we're, we're going too far away from bartending um, and, you know, um, narrowing the amount of people that want to be involved with it. Com competition flair, that is. Whereas if we, if we look at it more as an art, then it's less about trying to be egoistic exactly. and more about showing yourself and your expression of, of flair. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know where to put it as well. Is like we, we might practice, or we would, we can put maybe the same amount of hours, or maybe more amount of hours than than an athlete does. Yeah. You know? So that that's the that's the reason why I might associate it with being a sport because we are. It it, it is a physical sport. It is a physical sport somehow, but it's an art trying to deliver this sport like yeah. you're practicing you're practicing the sport until until it gets so effort effortlessly that it become art kind of it looks like it looks like it's it's funny you say that we uh, we just watched the 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 podcast i did with costin costin gake yeah we watched the first five minutes and part of the we tried to define what flair bartending is and whether you agree with that or not let me know in the comments do you think it needs a definition I know you, you, I don't know, we didn't discuss that yet, but one thing that we came up with is that to be a good flair bartender is it should be effortless. Yes. It 100%. shouldn't be a struggle and it shouldn't be angry and it shouldn't be frustration, of, although when you're practicing you get frustrated. On stage it should be this effortless performance that culminates in, in a drink being made at the end. And that's the first thing that you, from the point of uh, from the point of view of a judge and from the point of view of an audience as well, is the first thing that you see. Yeah. It's like, if I do this, I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's done for me, you know? Like, this, this as from, from the point of view as a judge, if you're like looking at somebody, you will analyze more, more of this, like the effort, yeah, less, yeah, the yeah. confidence, the everything more, because that's it, it is a really big gap in between you being able to deliver that perfectly or like you're still struggling to to land everything sure. that you land landing sure. and there's a lot of people out there that they like posting videos and they like in, in my my idea is like when you post a video you have you have a all the time in you, you need to, to record that to make it look badass. Good. Badass. Yeah. Why do you, you put post something that, that you badly land? You know, like <laughs> I was like, my 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 idea was like, if, and I had this uh, idea at one point. I was like, 
you need to post if you post a move you need to post it three times in a row land it three times in a row my idea is, is like if you land any move three times in a row it's when you when you, when you understand this move sure. until then you might land it and a lot of people land moves that by luck mm -hmm. uh, and when you play horse or whatever and 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 even this is like i always try to make my moves look good or catch them in the position that i want sure not like if i have to catch something here i want to catch it here i don't want to catch it around here yeah, yeah, and my yeah, yeah. from my point of view is like maybe you do the same move and you catch it in here and say i've done the move in my head you didn't do the move because you had you haven't had uh filled the gap of like the speed that is required for you to land this move in this amount of time you and know this that? And, and that can be like this is this is something that i don't think a lot of nobody have maybe talk about like the speed in a move sure we, we right, haven't spoken know? about it because you can do the same move but to land it like bam bam poof, like to make it same, look good in the same amount of time that he has to not more not less no uh, uh, bam yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we're yeah. gonna i want to i want you to show an example but i think this comes down to the we've spoken about this one as well before this comes down to how you present your flair whether it's on stage or it's in a show or behind a bar to people so that one they enjoy it understand it and to entertain by it and that it looks good because the whole point of flair you know it's supposed to be effortless supposed to look look good yes. and there's definitely some moves which which i've got which anyone can probably perform but depending on how you stand how you look how you like how quick you are with it uh, will define how good that move is or not. Do you understand what I mean? Exactly what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. But you've got you've got an example. Can you show me an example? An example of uh, of of what we were just talking about. Of a move. Like of that, a move. What, where, I, what you, I want to do. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there. that one. Well, I don't want this. Or, one. Just, just, just this one for an example. Just this, like, just, if I want to do this move and I do this, or I do this. Solid. Kind of. So, so it's like I would like not even, not even to move my my hand any any anywhere. Like, yeah. I would like yeah, to yeah. not e not even that if it's possible. Yeah. Or like let's say I want to go here. I want to go. I don't want to go like. I want to land it straight in 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 the hand and that and just a simple move like that will be already. It's like this one. Sorry. More. You did this online the other day. It's like you went. Yes, yes, okay. exactly, and, exactly that one, yeah. And that's basically this move. Yeah. Okay, but you change it to, you're yes. throwing the bottle in the tin, it completely changes things. Yeah. And I think people miss that a lot with their flair. They go, well, that's just a, a back to front in, in a shaker. You're like, no, you're missing the point here, is you can do a back to front in a shaker a thousand different ways to make it look make it look different every single time. And I think people miss that when they're trying to do flair or when they're trying to improve their flair. They're just like, how many objects can I pick up? How, how difficult can I make this look? Whereas if you, focus, sorry, if you focus more on presenting it better, it's gonna look much better, not just for you, but for everybody. For everybody, and in in, in this is when you will see the, the reaction of the crowd. And I always remember, I've done the first time I've done this move on, on stage and I would have probably done six, Ten moves harder than that be previous. Yeah. Nobody cared, yeah. and I've done this, and everybody went crazy. You know, <laughs> because this this shows this shows what we are talking about. This shows the effortless, the confidence, the everything that you want. That I wanted that there. I yeah, didn't yeah, want to yeah, go yeah, like. Yeah. I, I, and this is again like when I, when I try to explain. Uh, shows full control. Guys, exactly when I try to explain to to guys when when they practicing and everything is like I said. Try not to run for the things. Try. To throw them exactly where they want it. Yeah, and, yeah you know, yeah, so you yeah. don't have to. And and it happens. It might happen a lot. And that's that's when you're like, yeah, but it doesn't matter. When when you already started, you start running Man. for for them. You're like, when when I after I finished competing, uh, after I did my bottle tin routine, and that was there was some sketchy moments where I had to chase the bottle and things like this. But every routine before that that I look at, I don't like. Because that was more effortless and what I enjoyed yeah, a lot more. Yeah, that's crazy. When I look at all the rest of them, I'm like, it's embarrassing. So we've gone through a lot about co competition stuff, moves and everything else. But um, do you, can, can I ask you just some random random questions? This isn't a quick fire round, but just to sort of... Yeah, of course. Let me, let me, let me go it's back to here. something else. 
What else was we just talking about competitions? I want to see. Ah, okay, that's right. Okay, so um, you were talking a lot about when you were teaching people and teaching people. Now, uh, can you tell us about teaching? Like, where did you teach? This is not just a plug for. for uh, <laughs> 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 it's cool. uh, but you know, you've taught a lot of people basically, yeah. and the. The, the advantages, the pros and cons behind teaching, and did you like it? Did you not like it? Or what's what's your your view on? Ah, uh, yeah, I. Uh, I guess one of the biggest uh, things in life is being able to get to a point that you can share the information that you've uh, accumulate. Yeah, it's called dharma, not karma, dharma. So. Basically, that's like let's say the last point of evolution. So when you when you are at this point of giving, giving, giving back, but obviously a lot of times depending um, depending on the people, sometimes. So yeah, first of all, I, w- I work uh, f- the first time that I was teaching, we teach in Flare, Con- Flare Connection back in Spain, uh, but we were focusing only on like uh, maximum eight people we had, so we could have spent a little bit more time with with each, and. And after that, uh, I, I did for four years in uh, London EBS, EBS London. Uh, comparing, let's say, though EBS with the other one, uh, I, I could say a lot of uh, a lot of times people in EBS will come. Not not all of them they want to be taught flat. Sure. That was like the um, the thing that I didn't kind of uh, like, let's say. Because I kind of have to teach somebody something that they don't want. Sure. So I would love to teach people that come and say I want to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that's 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 mainly the big the, the biggest difference. Uh, apart from that, oh, it's 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 really it's really good Te- teaching. Is it's amazing of you being able to give somebody else something and maybe not maybe just even an an, an advice because yeah. it might might not be in flair. Just I th- I remember giving a lot of people like good advice is because they haven't had uh, this confidence in themselves and more likely this is uh, when when I was explaining I was like talking about flat I was like maybe you won't flat af- after you you finish the school but take the mentality from flat sure the mentality from flat will be that you are able to prove yourself wrong yeah so that you can achieve things that you could not <clears throat> dream that you can achieve uh, and basically just believe a little bit more in yourself and realize that if you put a, the right amount of time, hours, you will be able to achieve basically anything. Yeah, man. It's, so, uh, um, teaching is something which... I, I, there's a lot more people doing it now. Uh, but like you said about sharing your knowledge with others, it'd be great if more people would do it. And especially in the flair bartending world because there's always been that, you know, uh, argument within the bartending world the flair is useless and you shouldn't do it. And then there's the other side where people love it and it's great. And I don't think we'll ever get away from it. But the more that flair bartenders can, ch- can teach others and share with others, the more that the world it will, without, you we'll know. We'll understand the point. We'll understand say, the point right? of it. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to not beat around the bush here. I mean, flair in some respects is completely pointless. If you want to put it, some of the flair that you have on stage behind the bar, yeah. pointless. Okay, a lot of a lot of it. Okay, but that's why you have flair for behind the bar, and exactly what you said. It's flair definitely helped me become more confident. It it gave me so much within my life to to be able to deal with things. Even teaching people has been able to help me do better YouTube videos, so that when I teach online, yeah, you know, I can explain it a lot better. Because when I first ever taught a bunch of people, I'm like, yeah, you just chuck it behind your back, and that's it. Easy for you guys. Where's my money? <laughs> 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 Where's my money? <laughs> Where's my money? You're doing well. Whoa, wow, that's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So going back to when you started flaring and you were trying to progress, did you, do you remember any specific difficulties that you came up with or you came across, whether it's moves, training, anything which you found tough to understand or to grasp or anything like that? 
I remember the first thing was getting my hands on some uh, tools, basically. <laughs> like, like bartending tools, like plastic bottles was like... Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. why can you get them from like, the gods? I, re- I remember, I think I waited like a year to get like my first, <laughs> first flare bottle or something. Uh, I used to flare with a three-piece uh, shaker, like that you can bend. I don't think you could have nest or like that's like... <laughs> you can nest like a... I was doing wine, wine bottles, like tape around. Uh, pff, I remember smashing loads of stuff. Like I break like a, maybe slightly bigger than this table, or glass table, like a glass, thick glass, like eighty euros. Breaking my phone, my laptop, my like loads of lo- lo- loads of stuff. That's loads why. Stuff that's, like that. that's what, sorry. That's why whenever I flare my phone around, I always have the screen down now. Because very, very, very early on. Even now, bro, even now, after all these years, I just literally, uh, I took my case off my phone to pick up the card or whatever. The phone was on the on, on my bed and I literally random pick up the, the bottle and I was on the on, on the bed and I was, ah, no, I should move this from here because I'm going to break it. I pick it up, I put it on the table next to my computer in here, remove the bottle, flies straight, <laughs> straight in there and it break a little bit, you know, like the... The, the magnetized together. Nah, nah, yeah. <laughs> It's like an attraction force <laughs> that is like always looking for for the gaps or where where you can break something, where you can. Man, that's why you need one of these bad boys. It's nice and rubber. Yes, Shameless plug right yes, there. Yes, yes. I but... I wish that would have been existing when when I when I started. I Same. remember I broke my my elbow in here, like fractured a couple of bones in here from trying to do elbow stall. I think I've I've still got a broken piece of bone yeah, in here. Yeah, and it's yeah, never moved. So that one, I've. Loads of loads of loads of loads of things. I would say that that couldn't make our life easier. But thank God that we have these beautiful bottles now and different tools that can, let's say, make this culture. Do you know what the, the one thing I, that I struggled with at the beginning was okay. So the roll down the arm. When I saw somebody do this, I'm like, oh, fuck that work. This I was like. How does it work? You know, I was just putting it here. Going, I don't get it. Well, a lot of people do this and they go like, <laughs> How do you need? You need to put your hand. You need to go with it. You I know? used to, I yeah, used to, rolls as well. Like, right? I, I used to do this. I used to hold it like this and ah. roll it like that. So I used to help it. So it was my own way of figuring it out. Yeah. But going back to that teaching, if more people shared their information and their tips and their tricks with people then I would know the, how to do this and exactly, the right way to make exactly. it happen. Exactly, it is, it is the right way. Let's say it is the, it is the right way, but it, it wasn't. Way. Well, it, well, it, but that, this doesn't make yours, uh, yours wrong. No. And, and I will appreciate more something like that that you've discovered on, yeah. your, on your own than picking up things. But we're at the point of, let, let's say, like... Uh, Moves are becoming basics, and you you will you will require like a certain amount of moves. Yeah. And I always describe it as like a, like a new a new language. Yeah. Like a new language, you're learning uh, words, and as more words you know, as as bigger your vocabulary is gonna be, and sure. better you'll be able to express yourself. So this is this is this is what is going. But it it, it doesn't mean it's a wrong way. And no. Obviously. But it was just, it's just those like... You get it out of stuff, yes. To, uh, to, to, yeah, to learn the little, like, even when I was competing, like taping the bottles, which I think Nicholas was the first to do, made a big difference. Using the little uh, yeah. injection thingies to fill up your bottles so you don't have to untape and retape them. Uh, I remember for multiplex when you say that took me quite a while and I always remember explaining to, to students, I was like, man, I remember maybe I would have landed in one year or something realizing this grip, like literally this grip. Meanwhile, you when you throw a multiplex, no, so they yeah. don't they don't kind of hit or whatever. It took me ages, and now we're like we're explaining this in one day. You land, you start landing yeah. it in the first day. Maybe then it will take you a week or whatever. Then you to practice until you will land it more. But stuff like stuff like that, small details that that are basically shortcuts or hacks that we can help people. Hundred percent. More, I, more forward, you know. I, I never forget a trip. My first ever international flare bartending competition, luckily enough, was actually in Las Vegas. And when we got over there, obviously the style of the guys over there, Christian Alden, Francesco Leone, Juan Lorente, uh, 
they were juggling style, but they knew how to catch three and four bottles in their hand. And when they just taught me, like Christian Oldham, oh shit, taught me this. Okay, so you catch this one like this. Okay, and then he said, you just move that finger over the top and then you can catch another one. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, oh, so many possibilities. Yeah, and then yeah. he said, but if you want to catch more quickly, you can catch that one down there and then you've got all of these fingers yeah. wherever you want to catch a third. Yeah. And even that, now I've, I've come up with moves which have been that move, that little thing there yeah, has yeah. been key uh, to I call, to I call I call this is like opening gates to new to new possibilities. Exactly. And this is what we are doing basically. When when you are, uh, I, I consider myself I open a few gates as well in this in this um, world in this flow like small small stuff that you like that you're doing that opens the possibility opens the for, for 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 who Matt, knows? The, who the, knows? the perfect the perfect example another example for me is I do this in teaching is I teach people how to do a shadow pass in four different ways this way mm -hmm. this way mm -hmm. uh, this way uh, and and another one that way I think it is yeah. And just being able to... Do you want to know anyone? No, no, yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. But the, the, my, the point, my point with that is that I do moves like this. And without learning all those different variations, I wouldn't be able to do some of the moves that I can do today. What's the other one? It's a... It's a, it's a back to front behind the shadow. Back. <laughs> so you have that one as well. Giving uh, these away. Don't forget, comment down below. <laughs> being used. Still going to be brand new. Don't worry. Anyway. But, yeah, it, 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 I completely agree with you. As soon as you come up with that, or you're taught a little technique or a little trick or something, woof, you know, it's like you've just opened a, a new door to all these different possibilities. Which... And, then, and then you have, like, for example, you will have people and people. Uh, we, don't, we don't expect for all of the people in this industry or in any industry to be the, the pioneers, the inventors, the creators. The, you will have a small percentage of people who... who Focus on this, and yeah. then you'll have the early adopters. What's an early adopter? Because I have early adopter will be somebody who who will look at what your move and say, "Shit, that's amazing!" Copy it straight away, and maybe tomorrow it has an upgrade of that. Right, move. right. So for them, it's they they are not going to be those the the percent of pioneers. You know, right. like they don't care about be, being the first to they just open win. a game. They just exactly or just want to. I can say if, if an example, uh, Italian bartenders have this mentality of like they 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 not like they want to create they want to have all the moves yes. everybody wants to do all the moves and who can do more put a hundred two moves in one uh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah twelve yeah. minutes of flair in five minutes of flair. <laughs> I don't want to give names but like yeah it is so you'll have people who. I consider myself one of these. I, I love creating stuff and I, I feel um, I feel amazing when people are cheering on something that I know I, I it came from my sure. head. Maybe it's not even about from my head, it's like just But what you believe to be your creation. Exactly, you know I mean? exactly. <clears throat> but then you'll have this and you'll have people who you'll have people, you have the, the, the early adopters who will develop a little bit more of this. Let's say for example, no jumbo's doing the Finger roll, and now uh, Akim is doing the same the, ones. The same ones, exactly the same ones, and maybe a little bit. Uh, he figured it out by doing that. He can figure it out another variation of those moves. Sure. But in the same time, he's promoting this. Somehow, people are seeing it, and it's in this in this concern is good. But he's not the creator of this. No. You know so. And you'll have this amongst uh, uh, all those, a uh, lot of sports, let's say. And the best uh, motorcycle uh, is not Rossi, it might have been the guys who are riding uh, Isle of Man. But you not, might not even know what it is, but it, you will have always different... There's always people in the back, you know, basically pushing things forward, you know. And then you've got the people in the limelight, because, sorry to interrupt you, in, in competitions, because we focus a lot on competitions, what I see a lot of, there's 5% of people who go there to like what you were doing. This is what I got, this is what I'm gonna show you. Yeah. Win, or, win, lose or draw, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. This is my emotions and everything. Exactly. And then there's the people who are the business flair bartenders who are like, oh, I need to do this, 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 and this to win the competition. Yeah. And no, more often than not, their routines aren't as exciting, exciting as what 
the the innovators routines are in my opinion that's not always the case but general rule of exactly and uh, uh, to come to what you're saying is like you will have a lot of um, let's say those those people who are winning the the competition uh, in 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 my in my point of view is that they are losing the flair the feeling of flair mm -hmm. they becoming machines to win a competition yeah for an example from my point of view uh, any competition, and I used to change from different competition to the other one. Either a lot, a lot of things have changed, and I had a lot of people telling me, "Do this now, do this, keep this routine, and do this, and you'll yeah, be." Yeah, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't care. Once it's done, I have to move to the something same. else. That is a challenge for me. Uh, that challenge has been done. I have to challenge myself uh, const constantly to 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 get there. To keep excited about it. But uh, but yeah, you will have those people who are who are winning. No, uh, that. As I said, they are losing the soul of the flair, the, the, the feeling. I, I go and I practice and I practice, I, I've been flaring for 14 years and, and I still go and I lose hours freestyling and different tunes and different things and like mm -hmm. just getting into that moment that I kind of disconnect of my, of my brain and sure. I am like in this trance state, uh, flow state, trance state. Uh, that I Almost. everything comes effortlessly, and I don't think about the next, the next, the next thing. And the other guys who are winning, they are doing the forty times the routine from beginning to the end. I don't want that. I I, I consider that being like dumb, for my opinion, because I don't. Because yeah, they winning. Yeah, you're winning. Happy happy days. But is but it, the, is is the goal winning or is the goal? actually experiencing something and feel something that you will remain with you somehow as like then be... a trophy <laughs> <laughs> then a tro yeah, but that well. is we won't we, i don't want to go too into this side of things too much unless you want to but the, i mean that's i think that people are doing that 40 50 times a day a routine because of the way the competitions are designed and because of the level of the extremities that flair bartending competitions has got to that that they kind of have to in a way you know it's not i mean there's some people who can practice less and, and still do well but you know you've got people dedicating like you say six seven hours doing the same routine over and over and over and i completely agree with you it's it's contradictive to flair bartending because flair should be this effortless expression of yourself whilst making a drink without having to struggle or or you know, frustrate yourself to get to the point of 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 doing something good. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. It it, it doesn't have to be so difficult. But anyway, this is a whole other conversation. But Jumbles and I spoke about it on on the podcast. But let's move uh, on a little bit to uh, bartending and flair. Um. Obviously, you know, it's it's a conversation which people have had. You know, is flair bartending and and does it belong behind the bar um with costin gake we tried to define flair bartending and, and and we made sure it was to do with flair behind the bar but going back to when you first started as a bartender do you remember first of all do you remember making your first drink or your first cocktail for someone mm, to be honest, no. no do you remember using flair behind the bar for the first time uh, I, re I remember and I remember that uh, I was doing the same mistake that I'm teaching now people to not do like I would say do 10 moves and do them put your eyes closed then 55 moves and wait until you drop and they will laugh at you basically yeah uh, so so yeah I was one of one of them uh, I, I consider myself like how do you say like a really uh, I'm a person that I will always get involved talking. I'm not, I never, haven't been shy. Like I, I don't have this problem. But in flat, it took me up until one year and a half until I could actually do something behind the bar. Yeah, basically. Because how did I was you, like, I was you... like still afraid that I could not know how to present it. I didn't yeah. know how. I didn't know when to start. You know. Uh, I would have started and they wouldn't look at uh, no point. <laughs> Why are they not looking at me? You no, know, you need to bring, you know, you need to know how to bring the attention, yeah. first of all. Yeah. How to engage, how to like, 
uh, ev everything from the beginning to the end. Uh, and it used to be like glass ice and flare <laughs> one minute and then a pool. Yeah. And it used to be like nothing with like shakers, glassware, everything, yeah, 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 everything yeah. that you touch. And obviously this this has been changing during the years, but, but at the beginning it was that. And I used mo mostly like made this mistake of like doing, doing until you drop it. And then as I cannot... Then you look like shit, then, you laugh, then they laugh, then it's like, you know, instead of doing, hey, look, mm, boom. Well, that would have been much That's enough. You're like, you're like, hey, hey, check this out. But having the confidence of you being able to tell somebody, check this out, and then, and then land it, <laughs> that's a different thing than just picking it up and try to land it or whatever, you know. But... Uh, How did you get over the fear of flaring in front of people do you remember or was it just a progression i think it was just yeah it was just a pro progression doing it uh we start we start doing as i said a lot of events uh we we had like flare shows in between uh, the three of us when we did like uh, we went to cuba for the in, uh, international exhibition or something like that mm -hmm. and we used to do i think over there that was 2009 over that I'll, I already start getting like quite confident with uh, with a lot of bigger crowd, knowing that you have to do a show, three times show I think we have to do in front of like only the clients from the brand that they are like in, and it's the three of us. And then we had another round bar <clears throat> to get on top of the bar. It was crazy, like massive uh, um, blocks of ice in Cuba that they have. And we were holding, pouring uh, to the ice in people's mouth and like, um, and and after that, yes, it just obviously, as I said, is it, it happened for me the same with languages. It's like I was Spanish. So I haven't spoken for like two months, barely nothing. And after two months, I started sp speaking that I could not even. People were shocked. Like I was shocked. With, I was shocked on how how I didn't speak nothing, and then boom, boom. straight away, like. Brrr, and I remember even telling my mom, my mom, like saying, ah, I cannot wait to like being able to. To explain them because uh, at the beginning I was like, yeah, CC, si, si, claro, CC, si, si, whatever they say, <laughs> like, yes, yes, for sure, si, yes, si. Yes, for sure, and, Do you like dick? CC, si, si, claro. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of you being able, you know, to express yourself. To defend, yeah, defend yourself. So, so, yeah, I think it is, it is a progression and yeah. you'll, you'll be able to deliver a little bit better. The only problem was that I, I always freestyle. So I was like, that's that's what I used to like from from it. The, so I never had a routine that I was like, oh, now I'm gonna do this routine, and mm. I know that every time used to be different. And yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that can be a mistake. That can be a mistake because maybe you will drop because when you're freestyling, you're not hundred percent sure, sure of that routine. But but that's what I like about it. It's like I like to enter. To it's the sorry. It's the it's the connection. The connection. It's the utilizing the bar around you. Do you know what I mean? Instead of yeah, going, yeah. okay, I've got this bottle in sequence, yeah. you know, you're utilizing what is around you to create something cool behind your bar whilst making a cocktail. What they do pretty well, like even, I don't know if you've seen it, at Carnival Court, like there's one guy called Rene Garcia who uses the till and yeah. the till roll and everything else, you know? This is all flair for me. But uh, let's just go back for a second and you're talking about creating moves and, and, and trying to be original and everything else. Do you have a technique that you use for making up new moves or new ideas? Uh, or where did first of all, first of all, I think I think creativity or originality or whatever comes from from experience, different experiences that you had. When I was thirteen years old, I used to inline uh, skate, uh, be boy, and playing professional basketball. So I had like three three main things that I was like into it. Yeah. I, I was into extreme sports all, all my life because of this adrenaline, uh, inline blade, the snowboard, skateboard, um, longboard, uh, BMX, everything. I've tried every, uh, everything a little, a little bit. Mostly boards, I'm still, I'm still good, good at it, but <clears throat> I think, uh, and, and I always look of things to get inspired from. I always try to find the latest things of whatever is happening in the world, whatever new creations are happening, whatever. And basically I think that's what makes 
me being able to connect a little bit faster or understand a little bit faster some something but yes i have like i have a way of let's like, saying sometimes i'm thinking in terms of oh roles i never uh, what roles haven't been created yeah you know so and then and it's, and it's like uh, endless possibilities still yet to discover yeah you know and maybe now we are passing to the maybe next level kind of thing we used to be a role or role role yeah uh, done three yeah. now we can go six <laughs> behind the head with the, like if you if you ever so sure. you can you, you can get much much further in this in this perspective but uh, but the same, like, I was like, oh, okay, let's say, um, lately I've been focusing more when I was creating a routine on the, on the sounds of those routine and how can I create a move to the sound, what, what is, what is happening. So, so the sound of the music or the, the sound, the sound of the music. Yes. Yeah, so right, right, right. whatever the, the music you call, yeah. what are you doing there? What are you the doing? music yeah, yeah, is going to yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing there? What are you doing? So all of this, and then I was like more trying to get moves done for a for a specific um, thing. So then obviously the the sound will dictate the direction that you nice. that, that you're going. Kind of is like oh okay, this sound my sound like this style of move. Sure, 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 a sure. Bump, yeah. Everybody's got boo, doo, doo, doo. This this is this is already that. yes. Let's see what else can you do in maybe on the same sound, you know. Or, and so, I used to remember. I, I always remember this is like uh, a few competition that I had. I don't remember who exactly was commentating. I was there. I was like in one minute and a half in the routine, and then and then you hear oh the first the first uh, move to the beat. I was like, dude, I've done <laughs> everything to the beat before, you know? But it was like different beats, different that that is not a, a out there. Do, 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 do. Boom. It's not that. That, yes, you know, but maybe it's been do, 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 yeah. do, do. and you don't even hear the do, but is everything was there, you know? And <laughs> and I was like, I thought I could guess it was going to say. Oh, why did I struggle? Or, or I don't know. Like, or it happened to me as well in in IBA. IBA. I think we competed together. It's like when I had a broken leg in in IBA in, in 2000, Poland, 2011. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I've made a routine that it was like the first the first part was. Uh, I specifically choose a music that was from the 80s because no, I knew that the uh, people uh, are older who are judging this, and I specifically choose that part and everything was do 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 everything took me ages to to do that back then, and then I had the second part was a drum and bass tune that I throw my age and I go crazy. And everybody went and uh, old man was like, oh man, the second time that you're like, you've been a... And I was like, what do you mean? The drum and bass? I was like, and, I, and it took me twice as much to try to do this for them, kind of, you know? And and actually I should have... Just focused on focused the road on Exactly, what I, whatever I was doing because that... That's, it, that's what you see. And it's you, the, yeah. That we will see that, oh, he's doing well now because he's enjoying what he's doing. You know, and I think Marek asked me one time about this. I don't know one one time at the grand finals. Ah, dude, I want to use this uh, po Polish uh, rapper, whatever. You know, and I was like, bro, if you, but I don't think people don't understand. As I, bro, if you like this and you will enjoy that, people will see this on stage. That's and and that no, they don't care about. And I've used Romanian tunes as well one one time. And as long as it gives you that feeling you'll be able to deliver in, in, in a good way. I've been using like, uh, let's say when I, cho when I choose a certain music and I have a sequence on this music and it's like totally crazy, like goes really fast, everything has to go to the beat. I've, I've, I've um, let's say I've choreographed this routine, but then I stopped practicing on this music. I practice the same routine on different music just for me to be able to still have that feeling on stage when that music is gonna hit. Because, right. because we, a lot of times what happens is we choose a song that we love and we end up hating it after <laughs> break. Yeah. I, I even said that I think we are the, the second people 
apart from the producer who produced the song that listened that song that many times. Exactly. I don't think there's somebody else who who understand. That's maybe that's that's the why song. we understand all those beats that the judge don't don't. The end see. Of, after the twentieth or hundredth time of listening to that song, you hear things in the music that you've never heard the first hundred. You're like, wow. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting that you know you talk about the music leading the moves. I mean, I think there's again there's a handful of people that potentially do that on stage for competition flares that they all right right. What is the music doing? How can I make sure that my flair goes with that music? And that's when you end up creating the new stuff. That's when you end up standing out and being different. And I just wanted to go back as well to that move that we you talked about, or we spoke about at the beginning. This, yeah, like into the tin. I mean, it, even that is like you're you're looking at how you can make the back to front move look different. And just by making something look different, it essentially becomes a new move, in my opinion. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a back to front. No, it's a front to back, yeah, whatever yeah. you call it. But the thing is, is that try and do it. It's really hard, first it. of all. I have another one. Another one. I'm not sure if I'm going to land this one. So it's basically this grip, and it goes. Can you see my hand? Yeah. So it should go straight in the, straight Ooh. in the, in the thing. And then, and then, oh, and then drop down, and then yeah. So it's kind of going there, and it goes behind behind the back. But, nice. But but in a, I don't know, with a glass bottle, with a glass bottle, like with, I don't know. Yeah. But you understand, you understand what I mean. Hundred no? percent. Like going in, there you go, and catching. Kind I got, I get it, I get the idea. Kind of. I try to. I always try to one once I've learned the move or whatever that be, I might go back to the move and I was like think how do I want to make this move look? Like where do I want my hand? How do I want my body? What am I doing with my legs? How am I holding how am I staying? How is I focusing a little bit on on this? On yeah. the, like it, it makes a big difference to, and, to standing out and being creative and being original. And movement will lead you again. It's music and movement will lead you to discovering new new possibilities and new and new things. It's even by moving, by turning, by yeah. turning your hand where it is, is here, is there, it's Okay, what's that, the what's the what's your uh, I don't know, proudest or favorite move that you do? Or you can say, you can give me a couple. What's like some of your most proudest moves that you like the most? So one of my favorite moves, maybe because it's one of the last ones that I that I put it out there, has been like uh, a pour in the shaker, <coughs> four bottles in the shaker, uh, hold everything on the head, and then spin everything uh, on, on on my head. Yeah. And then I'm not sure. I don't think I blended it in um, in competition, but basically it was like. From, from here. So after the you got the four bottles in the... after the four bottles for for the after the spin the pour I was doing four bottles in here like this I used to pour from here oh wow and, and then and then, and, then, catch. and then catch like that nice so yeah stuff like stuff like this I don't know I'm I'm really proud of like the the sequence that I have in uh, in uh, bottle tin with a with a vinyl shaker yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, that's something that I enjoy doing is as 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 I said it's like it's more the things close to your body is more based on feeling I can I can interact and connect much more with the crowd I can look whatever I want I can do a lot of uh, a lot of things do you know what I like uh, about that four bottle sorry things like that that four bottle one I hadn't seen it although you're practicing here I hadn't seen you yeah. you do it in practice and obviously you kept it for the finals yeah and when you did it it was ah you know because it was new no one had seen it and it was great and it made such a big impact because you kept it for the stage and showed it on 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 stage there and then and uh, I, th I always kind of try to do this I but think. what sorry what I'm, what I'm seeing a lot of the because like you said earlier on in the in the chat in social media now it's leading the way too much and everyone is just putting their moves their moves their moves online 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 and what I think a lot of them don't realize is that if you are if you're a competing flair bartender and you put your new move online, when you go to a competition, the only people watching your routines are other competing flair bartenders and the people within our yeah. small world. 
So if you save that move, like you did, and don't put it onto the internet, and put it into a competition for the first time, boom, your no, 100%, 100%, impact is bigger. But, because th this is when you will actually, uh, how do you say, feel the respond. Of exactly. Uh, you won't feel a uh, thousand views on your uh, <laughs> on your Instagram or hundred comments or whatever, but you will feel when you go, Whoa? yeah, you yeah. will feel that, and and and, and, and yeah, that's amazing. It depends. It depends. Yes and no, because a lot of times, a lot of times, uh, maybe as you said, because people might not understand some of my moves, and I think a lot of times the, even the judges didn't understand what what I was doing. So maybe if I would have. Um, Put that move on on a video, and they would have seen it before. They would, I would have maybe been uh, judged different. Sometimes, maybe not on not in, maybe. not on all not on that move. I will still keep it uh, secret, sure. kind of. And I have this, and I always that was one of my things. As I said, I always wanted to be, bring something, of course. something new, and I always wanted to be that guy that will be like, whoa, what well, what did he do? Did he do? And even if it's that in particular one move, whatever. But I remember doing that and I remember practicing that move and I think I even went, I have done an event and I came from the event to the, to practice, it was like super, super late and I've done that and I was like, and when I realized that that can happen, I was like, pause, like, you know, like I already knew that it was like a crazy move and, and I've tried variation of that move is me spinning. I never landed it. I was close to landing it. And the bottle staying still. Yeah, they stay still, and I do three sixty base basically. Wow. Me, me, meanwhile, so it is it is a possibility over there over there as well. Do you have some moves which you can think of now, which are ones that people don't understand? I mean, I mean like that is for example the one that I like of yours is the under the shoulder. Yeah. Can you show that quickly? So we have over the shoulder. Okay, and then under the shoulder. Nice. Now, I think... <laughs> We're in I over... closed the light. <laughs> I closed the light with the move. Nice. But I think some people don't get it. They just think you're doing this. Yeah. You know, but it is underneath exactly. the shoulder. It really past the... And, and it's hard to... It's another one of those moves that we spoke about in the beginning of, you know, uh, somebody go, oh yeah, I'll do that. But this, for like, example, no, you haven't done it. to be able to, to present this move and where it's going, I always had to do it in movement, as it comes to what we were talking about. The movement leads me to this point of right. being able to do this. And I always used to do, like, coming here, doing this, and then, and then go for it. So I used to go like this, and then like that, and then like that, because that leads me... If I try to do it now, I... I yeah, I yeah, yeah, oblige yeah, myself yeah. to go in a direction that I don't uh, that I don't want. Instead of when I was going like this, I already my hand is already kind of going. Nice, nice. Going there. Do you have any others? Like cause the one, the this one as well. I think is like people can they will yeah, see I've it. Yeah, I tried to do this. Life, huh? It's it's harder than you think. <laughs> oh dear! But you can do it with two as well, huh? Super nice, man. And I did. You know the. The sad like, thing I've done it like this, so it's like the the snake. The snake. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the sad thing about a move like this, like I what I love it because it's like the old, uh, I think mad magic not magicians jugglers used to do it with a briefcase. Remember to see that when people do it with a bag? And uh, they walk around. I know. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. So I, I think I've done similar as well. That that's that's what I that's what I get inspired as well. Not from the one with the, what you're saying, but I've seen that as well. But I used to do this as well and trying to get like the bottle the same stays. Like movement that I kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, roll yeah, yeah, with yeah. that remains in the in the same in the same place. And that was if if it's a transparent bottle that was the goal of this move as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, if yeah. it's like, if it's transparent and you won't see that it's spinning, it's basically staying in the same, sure, in the same spot if you... What I was going to say is that the, the, the sad thing about moves like this is that, okay, you go up on stage and you chuck a, a whatever big move, let's say Tomic's Predator. Yeah. Which is a big move and love it, it's great. Yeah. Uh, and people go, ah, it's crazy. 
But then, you know, you do something which is super well presented. I mean, you presented it really well when you did it on stage and you got a good reaction. Uh, not every time. And I'm like, do you not understand? People don't understand how difficult it is. And, you know, the, the, the difference of that kind of move. Everyone else is making the bottle move, whereas you're making you move. Mm -hmm. You know, and I really like that. And, and if we had more people focusing on trying to bring new ideas like that, not specifically like that, but thinking outside the box to create new things, I think we would be in a much nicer place with, or a much bigger place with, with the kind of moves that people are putting out there. Basically be yourself, try to find your way of doing things, not trying to do the things that other people are doing because they're winning competitions and you, exactly. think, and you think that that's what you should do. Exactly. I, I've proven that it, when I qualified top, when I went top six uh, grand, grand final finalist, I, actually, I basically prove that it is possible to do whatever you want to do and still be over there on exactly. in, in the top. So you don't have to be exactly as identical as the other, uh, the other com competitor. 100%. And if you, if you think you're doing something wrong or which is not what other people are doing, do more of that. Because yeah. essentially that's what we want to see. And we don't see that enough these days in the flare yeah. world. But, uh, okay, if, if you are giving any advice to people in terms of starting flare, whether it's for shows or competitions or just behind the bar, what would be the advice that you would love to have had when you started? The biggest advice is don't take advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Huh? Yeah. yeah, to be honest, it is. I oh, some, sometimes, sometimes I say this because as long as you're going for an advice in particular, that means you're not confident enough or not uh, sure enough whatever you're going to do. And that makes you vulnerable in, in a way, kind of, that you're still waiting for answers from somebody else. But that, like, you know, like, to, yeah, I know what you mean. It but... depends on advice of what you say. An advice could be. This hack, as we said, that could sure. be an advice as well of, well, that's a help of you being able to do some, but it depends what. But look at it, let's go back to what did your uncle tell you? He said something. Can... Uh, my uncle was saying that you need to do, you need to be understand, basically. You need uh, people who, who you're doing it for, they need to understand what you're Would doing. Would you say that's the best advice you got for your flair career? I think I've, I've, uh, I've changed, I've changed since then. Yeah, yeah. Before, before I always remember, I don't care, I don't care if they're going to understand, I don't care if uh, I'm doing this, I know it's new, I know it's different, I know it's, I don't care, I don't care, uh, you know, and, and basically so if it's you, pointless if you, nobody could care, you know. So like, I mean, but there's, there's a lot that you can say to, I, mean, I'm, I'm, I know that you've given a lot of advice to people anyway. But if there's something, I know you said the best advice is don't give advice. But there surely don't, is don't, some. Don't don't ask for advice. I ask. No. Like, um, figure it out to find it yourself in in a way. I agree because, with that because that will make you being you, and that will make you being actually really confident of whatever you're doing, and and you want to do that. But that's it's the... not that I'm doing that because I need to do that. So yeah, I yeah, want yeah. to do that because I believe that this is. Who I am, or this is what well, that's I'm the, trying that, to prove. That's the uh, what's the what's the word? That's your that's a uh, I don't know the word. huh? Is it contradicting? No. Kind of like because because no advice is still advice. Like what you just said, basically, of try and figure things out for yourself. I think is yeah. a, is is great advice because as soon as you look elsewhere for answers all of the time, you'll only end up being like everybody else. Whereas if you try and find the answers, hey, hey presto, okay. You know, you'll come up with stuff, and this doesn't have to just be about competitions, it can be anything in life in general. You'll come up with the, the answers and the solutions by being creative. It's like there's a famous quote that I like a lot, is that there are no problems, only opportunities to be creative, you know? Um, and or, creativity takes courage. Creativity takes courage, it does. That's another thing. 100%. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, is there anything else you want to talk about at the moment? Um, basically, one more thing to define flair in, in another way, I will say that whatever we are doing, we're, we are in a constant con conversation with gravity. That's basically what, what, it, what it was, what it is. And coming back to your move as well of doing this role, if you realize 
sometimes being able to do a move it's really close to the way that you're moving yeah, yeah so yeah. this roll this roll can only be done by you figuring out your movement yeah and your movement it's is this is the starting and it's what what the hand is gonna do the hand is gonna immediately the hand is gonna go immediately up kind of no so i'm gonna if i'm doing this yeah <laughs> But if I'm doing that, I'm going with it, so it's starting from a, a movement. Sure, sure. Yeah? So, the same, that, that's the most important part. So again, focus on your movement, whatever you're doing, where is your leg, how is your back, because that, you need to be 100% in the, in the right position for you to be able to do that move. And for this will be like... Bro. That, like moving and it's the little, lifting, lifting your hand. It's the little nudge. Exactly. You, you, it's kind of like this 80% of teaching a move. You can teach 80% of it. The last 20% is these tiny little movements that you do with your body to make it work, which you can't really teach. You just figure it out yourself. No? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, that's, I think that's a very good point, though, what you said. Um, the little movements that you create yourself is essentially what makes you unique as a flair bartender as well whereas if you're constantly looking for answers elsewhere you'll end up being a, a, a mixed a match replica of of somebody else, else. So, yeah, that's, that's it. so um i mean obviously you ha you will have to copy you will have to have a base yeah right we're we're talking about this base obviously as the years moving forward this base is becoming more complex. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The movements are going to be more complex, but but still, try to take these movements, learn them, just for you to be able to to understand the movement. Yeah. And then hashtag respect. Don't do those moves if you know <laughs> if you know that those are the moves who define somebody else. Sure. Because like that's that's the only that's the only thing get inspired i get inspired from loads of loads of different things most of the times uh, is, is different uh, sports and different things nothing related to uh, flair sure. I, 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 to be honest i didn't get too much inspired from other people of saying oh wow this move and then i can create something similar mm -hmm. i want to not look as as at all i don't want to get into their kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. but but it's moves and moves that will become maybe who maybe who I don't know who said but I think Nicholas Nicholas said that he invented this this move or something whatever no which one Nicholas or this this kind of yeah this this is becoming way basic now yeah so, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah this has been the move and, and respect for that and everything but you've lead now flared into the direction that that's a basic sure and maybe now the da, 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 is going to become basic in the next uh, in the next uh, few things and now i have a few ones as well <laughs> that, 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 that you can but uh, but this is what i'm going try to take this inspire inspire yourself from 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 those moves getting into your into your dna kind of so you kind of know what how to do them and everything and then try to figure it out from that what are you bringing just upgrade base and yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. upgrade not downgrade or don't don't you know like and, and the same as is as, as, as that is like try to respect the others a little a little bit more in this in this in this concern because that's what that's what I believe is lacking in this in this culture, and that's why it's like a little bit egoistic, and people are not sharing and not. Uh, I don't no know. Respecting each other, man. Yeah, I completely yeah. agree with you, and that's one of my one of my pet hates at the moment in the flare world is this complete lack of respect for each other. The level of ego from a a high majority of the competing flare bartenders is just on another level i'm not saying i never had an ego i've still got an ego i had an ego and we all have an ego and you but, have to, and you have to deal with it but exactly understand that you know first of all it's a competition that you're going to and you there's only going to be one happy person at the end of the day and if you don't win get over it simple <laughs> as that okay <laughs> And you if, call it like that, the happy person competition. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that just because you don't win, it doesn't mean that you're not good at what you're doing. But and let's, let's come back to to no winning. Winning 
you don't win, you don't learn nothing from winning. No. You only learn from losing. So winning is not the aim, basically. But that's the problem. I think a lot of people are not even learning from losing. They're just going, I didn't win because everyone else is wrong. Yeah. Like, no, I can't perhaps, the point. perhaps look at yourself for a second and understand that perhaps you're wrong. Perhaps you didn't do the right thing. Perhaps you can improve on certain aspects. It is, it is, and it is. It's a lot of things in what to say yes, no, yeah. yes, no. But for, because as well, I can say uh, a lot of times I've been judged. Uh, I've been judged for the for, from the judges. They would knowing me what I can deliver, and they've been judging me on tops of that. They'd be like, I've seen Flav is doing better, so. Um, and maybe that's the reason why I didn't win the competition because they saw me doing better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. a wrong kind of approach because you should be only judged by what you've done that day, not what you are able to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and sometimes this this can come across. Uh, sometimes. I think I, uh, I think that goes again goes down the pathway of where competitions are in general in the flare. Well, obviously, we haven't seen any for a number of months because of the current fucking situation yeah. in the world. But I think that, that competitions in general need an update, need a change, need a, a refresh. I'm not saying the current style of competitions need to be taken away, but get creative with it. It's like with what, exactly what we were just talking about with yourself and what you're doing individually as a flair bartender. Well, as organizers, and this isn't aimed at any specific organization, association, or person, but anybody who is looking to organize any kind of competition within flair bartending, bartending or mixology, if you want to stand out, bring something new, bring something different. Look at Diageo World Class, you know, look at bowls around the world, look at, uh, you know, they're, they're bringing something extra, something different, different challenges, different ideas. And if we want to see flair bartending grow, if we want to see bartending grow, I think it's important that it changes and it, it yeah. develops and it evolves like flair bartending yeah. has, you know? And I think, you know, the, that's some of my pet hates at the moment. Do you have any pet hates in terms of bartending? Coming back, coming back uh, to this again, like hashtag respect and uh, it happened again. I don't want to give any, any name. Um, say some names. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm really, <laughs> how do you say, I even spoke with them in particular and I said, maybe you hate me from the way that I treated you, but in my head, I know that I've done the right thing and you've evolved and you've move move forward but maybe that maybe that was my approach uh, i had a really bad approach on not like take uh, treating people not in the good way let's say sure maybe because that that's how i grow up how i evolve i've only evolved passing struggling yeah. there is no struggle there is no progress without struggle basically yeah. so you need to be you know that struggling sure. state for you to pass to the next level so, sometimes but a lot of times when uh, if I would have show somebody something and it happened a few times the, before grand final let's say and I've shown a few things and people were copying exactly the same concept let's say you know the same concept and that's what I, that was that was something that I didn't like because I would have say if you consider me as a friend and, uh, and you show me that I've show you this you could have waited a month and do it after I've done this in grand final yeah. because that has been already there and it's been done. But that showing that you're doing now the same kind of thing is showing that you basically have no have no respect for this and you just want to beat me. There's, kind, kind of there's definitely me. there's definitely exactly what you're saying. When I started flaring years ago, there was always the talk about originality, 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 originality. Which was drilled into me by Nicholas and John and Neil Garner, Francesco Leone, and other people who who were sort of leading the way back then. And then, as the years have gone on, this originality respect has just completely gone out the window. You know, and we're seeing just uh, exactly what you say: people copying each other, people taking moves, and not even acknowledging where they got the move from. I give you like, I think that's. If you are going to copy someone's move, you have to be be, be sure, or be, you have to acknowledge that I'm taking this move from this person. Or if you are going to copy the move, you only use it for 
making a show, yeah. using it behind the bar, you know, the, the bar spoon Nicholas trick, all day long behind the bar. I always said it, and I, right. when I teach somebody, I always say it, say it, like, this is this guy's move, this is this guy's move, this is, how do you say, this is uh, respectful sure. for those people, it's like, no, check this move out, and it's like, oh yeah, no, this is not my move, this is this guy's move, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. just like that. I mean, and when you said about the way you treated certain people so that they could essentially improve, I think it's, it's, I understand you completely because if somebody, if somebody shows me a move and they go, what do you think about this? If I go, oh yeah, good job, good job. I'm not doing them any favors. If that's a complete yeah. copy of somebody else, I'm not doing you any favors. That's why whenever someone says, can you give me some advice? I'm like, sure, but you cannot be offended if I think everything exactly. that you're doing is crap. Yeah. You know, I'm doing you a favor by saying, that's not good, that's not good, that's copying exactly. to somebody else. But you'll have people and people, and most of the times people cannot take this constructive criticism. They will take it really personal and they, whatever it is. And I used to be like this as well. Like, whatever people told me, I was like, yeah, they have a problem with me, and blah, blah, blah. And so. But I guess you live and you learn and you evolve, and that's the whole point of, of it. It's like sure. getting better and, and realizing more and more things and collaborating, not competing, basically. I would love to see this more more collaboration than com competitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Pushing, it, pushing it to the to the level of... And I, I, I had this idea as well a, a few years ago, and I said, like, if I would have organized a competition, I would organize a competition, I would bring, let's say, I will bring you, Nicholas, all those guys, like, whatever, and I would pay you everything the, grand. the flight <laughs> no but i'll pay you the, i'll pay you the flight i'll pay you let's say it's in bahamas you have the hotel you have a week over there the, the only the only thing that you have to do is come and do your best uh show when is your, this competition happening it is it's not, it's not. <laughs> but that for if if it is no who's the winner if it is no money involved and this this will this will kill this ego there won't be any fight in ego. Everybody is going to come and he's going to show whatever he likes to show. Mm. And he will take those crappy moves that we talked before, like the ones that you cannot land, the 80%, you will do 30% or whatever, but you will do it so good and you will do the things that you literally feel good about and you will present a show in a, an amazing way. Yeah. Instead of going there and say, no, I need to be this guy, I need to do better than this. And I, No, just bring your, your best, best show. I'm, I, and that are, uh, I'm 100% sure that that's going to be like, all the shows are going to be amazing. Awesome. And at the end of the day, you're going to have a, a show case, basically, or of awesomeness, the best, of, awesomeness of the, the best people. And maybe you even no drops, no whatever it could be, or focusing more on other, on other stuff. So where do you see the future of flair bartending in general? Can be competitions behind the bar, everything. The future of Flair, I, I, I think, I think he's, he's still going to be a big thing in terms of events. I would love to, to see it grow to the point that we can even see a Vegas, one of those, uh, what, what's he called, like the big American talents and all this. Yeah, yeah. This kind of stuff, but well presented as the magicians kind of do. Yeah. Uh, well... Like more like again. A, sorry, like you mean like a stage show? Like a stage show, but like a proper get more production. things involved. You know, like not flare, flare. Everything is flare. Sure. You know, it doesn't have to be only throwing shit around. Everything is flare and involve different things like magic and and this stage movement and knowing how to manipulate the 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 people the people's journey basically sure. because you're taking them into a journey we have but, something like sorry we have something like this in the uk called the royal variety performance which is a selection of different performances which are on horses magicians singers all that kind of stuff do you mean something like this but with bartenders or I'll, I'll, i think that in the if in the future people are everybody's still going to do a flair behind the bar but i will hope that it was going to be more well presented and and i've seen so many people doing this mistake of like flare rush flare like just like and it's like i'm i'm really good of like oh, if i'm doing this i'm like like yes yes no. and then and then that's what happened instead of you trying to go like really nice like this and go like boom you got this happening 
you know, like something where you've done less, less, less than that, and you will engage more, and you will not drop, and you focus. Where am I gonna look? What am I gonna say? Maybe it's gonna be like. Which one was it? The other one, the one with the no hello hello sir, how are you yeah. wrong? Really nice, yeah. This kind this this kind of this kind of stuff. I would love to see more of this, more like confidence and talking and knowing and and doing less but more basically. interaction basically, yeah. pretty much is is I think is is part of what is missing. That interaction when you said it earlier. Um, people being individual and doing it just for themselves and not doing it for the people who are there to watch them who want to be entertained and that interaction I love it as well and that's that's why you, when you go to a bar and you watch someone like Tim Flippy Morris and his interaction with people yeah. is incredible and Rene Garcia is another one that we spoke about they just interact with it. they're not doing anything really they're not doing anything massive they're just interactive and but, they're the... but obviously we're talking about one of the hardest things to deliver because it's 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 personality based how can you, how <laughs> yeah. can you if you've been an introvert all your life how can you stand out there and be amazing don't be a flair you know like but uh, there... but there is the, sorry to there is the the image that Flair has at the moment is three bottles juggling in the air, woo, and lights and flashing images and loud music and everything else. And I think if we can get away from that image and show, and we are getting away from it, people like Vitaly Kolpin, who's mm -hmm. just focusing on the intricacies of spoons yeah. and jiggers and everything else, and how it is psychologically affecting your mind and everything else, and the craft Flair movement that people are using, tin on tin and jigger paws, so if we can get away from the fact that it has to be high volume, high energy, and realize that it can be super cool and smooth and sexy and loungy and understand that there's all these different types and you don't have to make people go crazy, go wild and get naked to, do, to, to be well respected or to do a good performance or to show something cool understand that it can be all aspects, all yeah, levels. It, it, it comes, it comes um, to the point that what music are you using, what flat are you using? It's like listening to music. It's like, yeah, you yeah, do yeah, rock, yeah. you're going to do rock yeah. flare. You know, you're doing... Well, you should do. <laughs> meditation uh, flare, you're going to do meditation flare. You know, like, that's that's what, how it should be. And I, I always uh, as well explain this, that flare is not this snatching and bam, bam, bam. Well, how do you flare in a five hotel, uh, five star hotel bar? Yeah, exactly. Because that's you more. Flare. That's exactly. more. That's how you will flare and everything and bam, bam and everything. But you're not gonna pick up the bottle and snatch and. <laughs> you're not gonna snatch it with that. Obviously, it's like it's so useless as well. How I used to call it is like silent flare. When you had a course going on and we had to, so silent flare like no snatch no loud uh, movement and stuff i've created one of the best moves ever basically yeah by yeah. not being able to do what i had Noise. like i always had to do so i was like how can i not make any sound and then i was oh shit this this cash here this there the other one do you know what i'd love to make sorry this made me think of something I've, I've been challenging myself for a while to create routines without snatches okay yeah. imagine you can make a competition where you're like you do anything you want, but no nests and no snatches. I wanted to do this. Woo! I think we've, speak, we've spoken about this. I, yeah, wanted, yeah, yeah. I wanted to do it. I've, I've, I've been really close to not, not doing it. I think I have like, if you watch normally my routines, I have like two, three, four snatches. Yeah, in yeah, my yeah. Routine. I can easily get, get, get out of that. But, but and uh, that's when, when the move, the, when the difference is going to be seen because a lot of people have... For, uh, Creating their all routines and it's basically based on snatch. You're doing 80% snatch. Oof. Snatch, catch, that's it. So who would like to see that competition? Anything you can, you can do anything you want. No nests, which is that. And no snatches. With tins or bottles. Can do that. You, can, you can do pause. You can catch it this way. You can do lampshades, but the bottle cannot go in the shaker, basically. This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One. Let's do it! Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna, uh, well, what? Just let us know if you like, comment, <laughs> subscribe, and then maybe we're gonna do the second... Uh, second, we will do a second episode. We'll, we'll do it behind the bar. 
not in my bedroom. But before we or get we to... Or we do it in the land. Or, or we can do it in Woods. the land. Uh, there's one more main question I want to ask you. And um, then we're going to go to some quick fire questions. Quick fire questions. The quick fire round. Um, but this is a question which... You said that uh, I should have a question to ask everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and this is going to be the one for the flair bartenders. Is what is... What does flair mean to you? So, first of all, um, it's... I see it as a deconnect, deconnection. Mm -hmm. I deconnect to the day-by-day -day thoughts, struggles, life, whatever, whatever passed through your mind when when I used to not feel good about whatever happened into my life, I used to go and flare. So this is one of the things I, I will say I will... Meditation? Meditation. Well, I, it can get to... It is a state of meditation as well because, yeah. because I always wanted to to see the, how do you say, like the process, physics, uh, machine calculating what is happening into our brain and meanwhile we're doing this because it's like uh, the information is... is flare is like kind of like ping pong and gymnastics that the information cannot travel so fast from from the brain to the to the end up as as we are doing it and what do you mean by that sorry i, I mean like you know when you when you're freestyling and you're or when you're flaring just in general you will link the next move but you did you don't have the, the, the time to think that you're gonna do that move you're just doing that move yeah, and then yeah, you're gonna yeah. do the next move without you being able to have that process information time of from what am I gonna do and do it? Right. So it's it's, it's basically it just happened. It's just it's happening. It's going with the it's going with the flow. Uh, yeah, this this is this is but this is basically what it what it means for me. It's like uh, deconnect. I, I see it as I deconnect from 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 the world and I get into this state that we we talk about this flow state. Once 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 you once you can get there, everything happens effort effortlessly and. And time disappears. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything, everything. You're feeling, you're feeling good about everything. And I guess one of one of the main things why I've still do, did it until now, and I will still probably do flair for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. just for this aspect of like deconnecting and just sure. like getting into and as like just let. I don't know what is happening. Just let it. Just let it go. Just let it. Just let it um, do whatever. Whatever it's doing, and 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 mainly that is. Okay, like, I have another question then. So, how much has has Flair changed your life? Completely. I'm like it's becoming it's becoming part of my life. Is is my lifestyle? Is 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 what I've done? Is Although I love to do loads of other things for apart from this, like mainly creating and building stuff from scratch, is, is what I love to do. Um, but yeah, hundred percent. If it changes, it changes all my life. And a lot of times I'm thinking about it, and uh, uh, and and I, I, I thank for 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 being able to live this life being involved in some in something like this that yeah, this yeah, is yeah. part of my lifestyle I, uh, a lot of times i'm thinking i say i could not think of something else more amazing than than what am i doing apart from uh, of the wingsuit <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah yeah that yeah. would be probably the next uh, the next That's thing the next if, I quit, if i quit flair it's like done but um, but mainly yes it, it it changes everything it changes the um, the way I look at a lot of things uh, I've learned my my process of learning things and uh, like step by step and uh, it's changed my my abilities have changed my uh, how do you say uh, peripheric view I think I have seen I've seen more I focus focus sure. more on different become more observant more, of things happening yeah, around us more observe um, how do you say yeah it's like totally hundred hundred percent well there you go huh? well. Um, now, well, let's just finish that bit off. So, uh, yeah, so changing your life. I mean, anybody thinking to get into Flair Bartender and has got this far in the video, go for it. Because, I mean, like you said, when you said to be involved in something like this, uh, there's nothing else better that you can do. And I think it's, hundred, it's very true what you're saying. is like when you're involved in a community that you're heavily involved in, you can help with the development of it and you're... 
it can be your sort of escape. Yeah, and and when it's I, what people dream to be a part of. And when I, when when I started, so basically as uh, for the previous experience, I used to play basketball for seven years, streak ball a lot. No, no, you kicked my ass at the streaks. I don't know the others, and a lot of people there. So <laughs> I've been probably beaten by four or five people in my entire life, one on one on one, but. I love that and that was my thing for ages and moves and everything and, the, and when end one came we knew all the tricks everything and it get to a point that that kind of stopped I could not learn anything else that's basically when I when I kind of finished school and mm. and, and find flair as well and when I found flair when I discovered flair for the first time coming coming back from 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 basketball and uh, breakdance that is still like is like a um, Something that involves a lot of Body ability, uh, ability and movement and tricks and all these kind of concepts. When I saw Flair the first time, I was like, wow, this is it. I didn't see an end to it. And yeah. I've been doing it for 14 years now and I still don't see any end of, of this. The we're, beauty we're, of it. We're basically at the, the beginning. scratching surface kind of uh, thing. And, and, and from now, it's, it's basically building building the foundation for, for, for what, is come, what is going to come next. Fantastic. So that's, that's mainly it. I still don't see an uh, end to... The same. It's, it's just beginning and who knows where it's going. It's like limitless, end, endless possibilities. Toby Hilton, a famous guy from years ago, said it uh, once really, really well. He said, the amount of ways that your body can move culminated with the amount of different objects that you have behind the bar can, you know, equals infinite amount of possibilities and moves and ideas and sequences and everything that you can create. And we didn't even get to the point because me and John was a lot of times we were talking uh, about like uh, when people are copying stuff and blah, blah, blah. And we were like, well, I want to get to the point that you cannot copy. You, you can basically you cannot copy them. It's so hard. <laughs> I've got so, a couple that people can't copy. It is so hard. I have a couple as well. Not it's from not for, sorry, not from being difficult, just from being having weird oh, elbows. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you uh, can probably do it, but yeah, some yeah, other people can't. But, but that, that's what that's that's what that's what that's what I mean. Is like when you when you get to the point that we still not got to the, to this point that you're looking at a movie and you're like, oh shit, that's that's so complex. When you used to we were talking. You said about, I think, Alex uh, or something, and he was showing some moves, and you're like, how much time do you have? <laughs> how, how much time do you have to put into that move? That's, a, that's the question. This... Because you have questions. Like, I have a couple of moves that I was showing, and I was like, oh, that's sick. I was like, yeah, it's sick, but it's like, bam, top, 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 top. It's like four tops, and it transfers and shit, and it's like, when I'm going to let it? Yeah? <laughs> Does it is, it? is it even worth it to try to, to practice that? Yeah, it is. You, you can land it at the end, but... And 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 as, as I advance in flair, I kind of start taking out those moves that yeah. will, like, injure me and not... That's going to take what's, years. What's the, the yeah. point? What's the point? Or, or what's the point if the probability of you making a big mistake, like cutting your tendons or whatever, mm. in a late nest or whatever, and it is a few moves like that, that I was like, this is pointless. Maybe people still didn't understand, and it's a really risky move to do, and... and there's, a, there's a funny you should say about Alex Sell. There's a move which Alex used to do with three bottles, which he would stand with two bottles in this hand, one in that hand, he'd throw them up like that, he catch one there, one would do a shadow, he'd turn around and catch that one, and he'd come back and catch this one. And he told me that he showed this move to Marek before he could do it. He said, what do you think about this? And Marek said, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really good, but it's impossible. He says, you shouldn't waste your time learning to do it. So Alex is like, fuck you. Okay? In, the, in a nice way, like they're friends and everything. He's like, you know, you should waste your time. Six months later, he's like, what do you think about this? Ba ba ba, like this. And now he does it, you know, he, he was doing it on the stage. But yeah, he had some, I mean, you're, you and him are similar and very different in, in, in a lot of ways. Like he wanted to make the biggest, most difficult moves, mm. which I still believe that he had some of the biggest, most difficult moves, uh, even now. Um, and you want to make the most crazy, un, non-understandable kind of moves. And, and another thing, you're gone. No, no, but I mean, and like you said, what's the point? Okay, fair enough. Sometimes you can come up like Alex and create a move, which I'm like, yeah, what is the point? But the point is, in my opinion, is for your own personal 
Development. Development. And, and and like, like, evolve a little to... bit harder because you're challenge, constantly challenge yourself to be able. It, it's your challenge. It's challenges. It's... Challenge accepted. I will do it. You know, like. But coming back again to what you were saying is like he's trying to do it difficult. I'm I'm having some of the most easiest moves probably to to teach and like uh, and do. And people are like, yeah, they they might you might land it in the first time that I show you. But it's like, yeah, but this is easy. And my question always comes like, if you were if it was that easy, why didn't nobody else create it before? You know. So so that's so that's that's what that's what it is because it's like like, like this one. You know? Come no, I was doing uh, that. But, 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 yeah. but yeah, maybe, maybe you should show them what a move I'm talking about. Uh-huh. You see? Do it, do it again. Do you see it? Oof. Nice. Super the next challenge will be I've, I've been challenged by somebody to do because I've upgraded this to, to this. Kind of, and yeah. then said to swap it to the other one, to take it back to the, to, the, to the other one. So I was like, I have to start, <laughs> to start practicing that. That's but the whole point for this was like to try to try to put the the this facing down. This yeah, is, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, where yeah, I went. Yeah. I went like this. So it kind of it's a working flat bottle. Again? It's a working flat bottle, but it goes like upside down. Upside, back up again. So it stays it stays completely at some point here. So guys, just just. Yeah. Yes. Just hang on a second, right. just so people on the camera know, he's not holding onto the bottle and doing this. It's right. it's like on the fingertips or here, and to show you how difficult. I mean, I can't even get it upside down. Yeah. But yeah, it is. It's it's a lot of understanding. Yeah. Because you've got to stay in contact. You're not holding onto it. Then push down and then back around again. Mm-hmm. It is, it is tough. And the other one as well, and and only by doing this, this will require like how do you say like a different balance kind of. You're not used to this balance. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah, not yeah, used yeah. to holding in the in the wrong position and then and then come coming back. Yeah, I remember you practicing this and by doing this as well because this this is where it came. It came up until here, and from here it came kind of kind of back. No. Nice. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like you go in here, and then. So wow. like a 360, no? And Boom! An explosion! Explosion! Explosion fish. Um, alright. Let's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, but, no, but not only that, it's like, for example, which ones? I don't know, like, a lot of, a lot of stuff coming to, coming to show, like, this, this will be difficult. This, this moves, this moves like this will be difficult and a lot of people, because you haven't been here. You haven't been here, kind of. You haven't been in this in this position. wrong position to understand it. It's the same as when you say you're doing a backflip, no? It's people are afraid because they haven't been here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't been here. <laughs> yeah. Once you've been there and you see what's going on there, you'll be able to try to... And, and, and that's what it is. And mostly it's like all those moves is based on, on the... On your body, yeah, it's yeah. like your body. If it's in the wrong in the wrong position, you won't be able you won't be able to do it. Is that so? Sorry, go on. So, but yeah, this, for example, as I said, it's like this. This is this is a. I love this move. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's looking good. You can present it good, and you will teach somebody and you'll do it in in one day in, in one day. But nobody has thought about like no. like it uh, be, be, before. Oh. Oh, I don't know. It's funny I mean, you should say like you haven't been there. There's one thing I, I do when I teach people as well. I'm like, look, you're doing something when you're catching a bottle on the back of your hand like this. You're doing something that you've never done before. Never moved your body in that way, even though it's just this. Yeah. You've never manipulated an object in such a way where you have to control the spin of it. So you need to get you, that needs to become normal for you. Mm. That movement needs to become a normality so that it becomes much easier to do. The same way with any move, yeah, yeah. basically, with any yeah. movement that you do. And once it becomes normal, then you're like, oh, cool. Then it sort of just snowballs and snowballs. Then you move on to that, mm-hmm. then you move on to that. Yeah. Exactly how you start, said it started like this, and then mm-hmm. back, and now you're the doing... Basket, the basketball, the basketball move. Exactly, so inspiration from so basketball. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. now you bring it to this, and then you've developed it to yeah. six, seven, eight other ideas. Yeah. Yep. One one of it was like this. I used to do it. It was to go like, and it was the people go like, 
So, um, all right. What I want to finish up with is a quick fire round. It's the first time doing this. And this is 20 questions. Woo! Why? 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 20 questions. Why Some not, very simple. Why not 13? Because 20 just, I just started typing and I wanted to make it a nice round number. You know, uh, OCD almost. <laughs> Has to be 20. 20. 20. Maybe I'll throw in a couple of red herrings along the way. But uh, don't think about it. Five categories, four categories. Four twenties. Four, four, categ four categories of uh, five questions. The thing with the quick fire round is that the beginning of the quick fire round, the introduction is not very quick because... <laughs> <laughs> but it's 20 questions. Don't think about having the right or wrong answer. First answer that comes into your mind. Okay? Okay. Okay. Let's start the clock. This is not to time or anything. Boom. Start the music. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Go. How old are you? 33. Favorite rum? Havana tree. Best cocktail in the world? Last world. Ooh. If you were sta stranded on a desert island, what one thing could you not live without? Water. Oh, very good. Best advice you ever received? Don't listen to any advice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to nobody. Best bar you've ever been to? Best bar? However, I don't know. Gibson, Oreo. Uh, what's your, who's your favourite bartender? It used to be Nicholas. Mm -hmm. At the beginning? Used to be. Okay, uh, what colour is your toothbrush? <laughs> what colour? Is your toothbrush. Um, if you could be an animal, which one would it be? A uh, wolf. Um, do, you, do you have a life motto or a life saying that you live by? Mm, not in general, but I have a lot of uh, ideas. Okay. Uh, I don't know. No not worries. One in particular. Coffee? Yes. Favourite airline? The cheapest. The, che <laughs> the best bottle to flare with. Don't have to say the Tom Dyer one. For, you know, but, uh, best bottle to flare with. <laughs> uh, Gunpowder. Nice. Uh, weapon of choice. Weapon of choice. Dagger. Ooh. Uh, shot of choice. Shot. Jägermeister. Gold or silver or. Gold. Bitcoin. Nice. Bitcoin. Sunset or sunrise. Sunset. What annoys you? You asking me all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> you have too many questions. Your greatest failure. What? These 20 questions, no. Your greatest failure. What is your greatest? greatest failure was being probably my, my biggest uh, achievement. Oh, really? Like fa failing made me become who I am. Yeah, a lot of trauma and a lot of things, yeah. Uh, and finally, final question. Describe Flair Bartender in three words. First three that come to your mind. I want to say fun entertainment, but I'm not sure if it means the same. No, that's fine. Fun, fun entertainment. Ent ent entertainment and, uh, and flawless. And flow, flow. Flawless. <coughs> Effortless, flawless. Oh, flow. Okay, cool. So way. fun entertainment and flow, basically. Okay. Well, that was that was it for the quick fire round. But uh, maybe we'll do more of those. Who knows? But um, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, seriously, thank you very much for doing this. Um, Flavius has actually been on the other channel teaching some moves, which actually that video is going really well that we did in the studio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of moves you can learn from Flavius. I'll put a link up in the top where you can go and check that out. Appreciate you doing this. I'm sure we'll do more. If you want to see more, please let us know in the comments. If you've got any questions about anything, let us know in the comments. If there's anything you want to say, to the beautiful people, there's about seven people that are going to watch this probably. Click the like button and subscribe. <laughs> ah! Fantastic. Don't forget to comment down below if you want to win one of these bad boys. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Especially if you watched all the way until now, the very end. And you may have seen these laying around. They're not hats. They're not hats. Watch this space for what these are used for. Awesome. Thanks very much. Thank you, Flavius. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, until next time, we'll see you then.